Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special episode. Uh, every episode is special on the podcast. Uh, today, we have Billy Musa, who's going to walk us through um, an application he's built, which aims at helping out our farmers in um, Sub-Saharan Africa. And what we're going to see is how exactly he built it, um, what tools he used, and um, of course, his recommendation for how you can go ahead with this. So, Billy, I'd like to uh, welcome you, uh, and thanks for uh, yeah. being with us, and um, uh, we'll let you keep it Okay, um, thank you very much. I am Bilal Musa. I am a full stack developer. I have um, over five years experience in software development. And uh, I work with um, several companies like Resistor and Spotify, where I started as a general social developer. And uh, within two years, I was able to rise up to a uh, senior engineer. Um, most of my work are uh, enterprise solutions. I worked on school management software before, now it's just management software, digital graphics software, farm management software, that's uh, the plan that we're talking about. So I have been contributing a lot in all stages of uh, system development, language, with things. And just like two years, I started my journey in deep learning, where I had a tool and degree in deep learning and uh, Intel Edge for AI. So I was able to work on projects like plants, this inspection, and other stuff like that. So uh, as for Planter, uh, actually I started working on Planter, let's say like two years back, two, close to two years. So then I, I was working on my own projects, yes, uh, for the job pool. It's for like uh, recruitment, online job search back then. So, my mentor, at the same time my boss, there I was doing my internship. So look at what I was doing. I was like, okay, what's going to doing? And they're working on personal services and they're to learn. So I was like, wow, well, stop working on app. I want you to start doing this solution. You, know, you just have to like have your own stuff. I was like, wow. So can you just like share the idea with me? I was like, ah, yes, we want to tap the next crude oil in Africa. I was like, what's that? Sector. So we sat together. Now he told me about the experiences that he's having, a lot of like challenges he's having. So sharp people like him, corporate farmers like him that, that uh, wants to like venture into farming. There are a lot of challenges they are facing. You now due to the lack of uh, knowledge in terms of farming and crop plantation, so they have like higher people to work for them. And at the end of the day, they run at loss. So I was like, okay, why can't you just build a platform that will guide people on how to um, embark on crop production so that they can able to maximize their profits, stuff like that. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's really interesting. And I started making research, looking at uh, the major problem faced by um, farmers out there not just farmers, I mean corporate farmers. And that is how we were able to like come up with um, a project called Planter. So Planter is, as we call it, a smart farm management system software. Why is it so? Because it is um, a kind of AI and data-driven application. So it's not just an app that's going to be used on farmer, no. It's there to uh, help you as in guide you through all the, all the, the processing from the plantation up to harvest. So not only that, we also, our planter also helps you to automate your task. So whenever you want to perform a task, we ask some things of the question, never mind, don't, uh, don't, uh, I'm going to show you a demo on how everything works perfectly. So it helps you to generate tax calendar at the same time, um, send notifications. So in some way, it's just like a kind of um, a digital farm consultant. So instead of you um, hiring farm extension workers to come and work for you, you can easily make it of a planter. So why are we still doing this? Because in Africa at that, there are millions of farmers out there. And the number of extension workers we have, there are less than 10%. So how do we expect 10% of farm extension workers to, to serve millions of people out there? So that is why we are trying to we try to come up with this uh, digital platform that could help um, farmers. So 
I think uh, for that, that's just a general summary of what uh, Planter is all about and what's really triggered me to start working on the project. Uh, I, I think the most important thing you want to know is just like the stack to uh, use yeah. in use of this um, project, right? Yes, yeah, so I, I think uh, even, even before we get there, I, I want to you know, like dive deep into some of the things you mentioned because um, you mentioned you know, like really interesting points. Like the fact is, uh, you said you know, there's only 10% um, support, 10% uh, of uh, people who can actually support the millions of farmers. And you know, like generally, the um, the argument against you know um, some uh, software tools, like uh, the one you built, is that the tools will replace the existing workers. But in this case, there aren't even enough existing workers. So your tool is actually making it clear for both the farmers. And maybe even possibly you know, uh, these consultants who might also maybe sometime in the future use this. So it's, it goes to show that you know, um, that narrative of software taking over to this job isn't always uh, consistent with reality because there are some times when there aren't simply enough people to actually you know, do the work um, uh, in software. Right? Okay, okay. Uh, actually, it's not that maybe, yeah, it's not that maybe. Uh, we're not going to involve extension workers. The platform can also be used by extension workers. Yeah. Uh, maybe by the time I show you, I show you the, plat uh, the platform, you will see where you can even hold request for consultancy. So this, uh, the platform is just there for you to get started on your own. Mm -hmm. But uh, nevertheless, I, a lot of scenarios where you need physical contact of this extension for uh, extension workers. So there is room for extension workers to come in. So not only that, he said, you know, it's a smart farm management system software. So extension workers can also need to this platform to manage the farmers of their clients. So we are not like saying uh, uh, no more extension workers, yeah. or it's trying to like take over the job of extension workers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like that. It's just to help them to uh, serve a lot of people out there. Uh, lot of people out there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so, so this is a way to, you know, you can, this software can essentially um, help um, uh, these workers or the consultants um, to get more clients because now yeah. they advertise themselves through the platform. And then at the same time, it helps the farmers who need um, uh, this software to be able to, um, uh, you know, access uh, you know, more data about their farm. So I guess, you know, one, exactly. one question I have is for the farmers themselves, how how you know, and maybe this is something you've, uh, you've uh, discussed it. But, um, how how do you find that they actually use the software? Because you know, the general assumption is that um, most farmers will not have an IT facility. In the IT yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, we have a segment of uh, clients that we are targeting. Mm -hmm. You know, we include them into three. Right. We have the Nigeria one, two. And three. The, the one is those who are not um, IT line, don't have smartphone. Because, yes, of course, we usually encounter this a lot. They yeah. ask us questions out there. How do you expect farmers to use this app? That's our major thing is that we can local farmers are the, uh, uh, are the ones there. I hope you understand now that most of these farmers are locals. No, it's not like that. I hope you understand this now. If you go into, if you look at different countries like uh, Nigeria, for example, they are into precision farming and they are really good. They are very, very good. They use AIs, which has been machine learning to do a lot of stuff there. So why can't we also bring the, we have developers who can able to do this. Mm -hmm. We have them uh, here, right here. So our uh, major client that we're targeting uh, corporate farmers, just like what I said, as long as you can be able to use your smartphone, then definitely you can use uh, Planter. So maybe at the end, we at one point we we are trying to like come up with a way of like uh, using the app by local farmers maybe via USSD. But for now, we just uh, want to start with uh, smart uh, for smartphone users where they can be able to have access to the platform via web and mobile phone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I have more questions, but I'm also excited uh, to see uh, the application. So uh, I think uh, you can go ahead and you know uh, show us um, uh, the demo. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So uh, our major website is 
is uh, plant type of NG. So when you visit the site, you can be able to get a lot of information that you can read there. Uh, we kind of state all the features we have on the platform. At the same time, we have um, a common features to uh, still the receiver uh, we're working on it or receiver to work on. So you can just check this out. So for you to be able to have access to the demo, all you have to do is to click on this demo button, then it will bring you here. So you don't need to put this your credentials, you just um, click and as well as telling you to sign up. Okay, so this is the demo page. So we have the farm and um, workspace. So as you see here, we have about like 10 workspaces and seven farms. So the more you are adding them, you will see the number of farms you've created. Let me try to create a farm here. Let me have to click here. And uh, let's see. I don't know if I could use this. Yeah, and uh, let's say we have number of hectares, uh, like number is 10, 10 hectares. And this, oh my, I'm going to use candle because I'm kind of right here. And local government, I'm going to use uh, Kura. And your know, ownership status, owner, rent, or inheritance, so let's say rent. So once I click on save, automatically it will create. Uh, the uh, farm here. Yeah. So let's try to visit the farm. So actually, we have uh, the application, which is the activity, but that's all it's a light and plan. So this activity here, we able to see uh, the summary of what is happening on your farm. As you can see, we have any production, no task, and no uh, finance uh, status. You click on uh, weather, you need to map your farm. So I'm going to click on um, this part, search for Quora, automatically to detect your farm, the location of your farm. So you click on Quora, and the next thing you need to review the area. So all you have to do is to search for your farmland. Don't be surprised, most of these farmers you can locate their farm. They want the local farmers. This is uh, one of the things you've experienced before. So all I have to do now is to zoom to where exactly my farmland is. Uh, let's say this is my farm. Let's park here. So if I click here, I'm able to get the latitude and longitude. All I have to do is to submit. And automatically it will create and give me the weather data without even refreshing the entire page. So I'm able to get the current weather status, um, how are the weather forecast, and at the same time, hit, hit the um, forecast. So at least this is will, will, uh, will be helpful for farmers to be able to make um, decisions. So they can able to know what is the weather status, when we need to do a performance specific um, task. So when you go to soil, this might take a little bit longer, uh, longer time. Why? Because we, we try to like get it using our API and it's using our machine learning to, able to get information about the soil data. So we provide like a, a soil moisture, we tell you the farm not what it is, the soil moisture of farmland, let's say the natural gene, uh, clay content, uh, seeds content, and everything like that. So, as you can see here, we have the soil classification of this farm and other details like right here that you might need to do. For instance, the sand property, uh, with the clay and the uh, nitrogen uh, property. So, I think for that, this is what I can show. For the satellite, it's coming soon because we have something amazing coming right here. I don't want to mention that here. Uh, it's going to be fully AI uh, using uh, satellite imagery to be able to uh, that will enable farmers to do all their scouting. So we can able to use satellite imagery to know the area of the farmland that have um, has uh, this deficiency in 
most of this shiny was shit at this place. But then, so uh, a lot of work is still going on there. So I think what I would just do is to create crop production. So go to workspace, then you click on add crop production, and you see our farm. Yeah, so these are the list of farms we had created so far. And this is why I just created the post farm graph kernel. I'm going to click on next. So right here, uh, planter will prompt you. Uh, this guy you're seeing here, we call this planter assistant. So a lot of work is still going on here because we are planning to come up with a uh, boat where farmers can do to interact with this guy over here. So for now, that's the constant. Uh, yeah, okay. So here we're able to like predict to tell you the type of crop you can plant based on your region. And don't forget the farm location of the farm that is in Kula Kano. So these are just some of the list of crops that you can plant here. And if you feel like maybe some um, crops are missing, you can toggle here to view um, other crops that, you, that is if you wish to select them. But for this one, this is just a recommendation. So I'm going to use choose maize and over here we will tell you the seed variety to use it's, this is the kind of recommendation so i can just choose one here and you choose this yeah, click on next so we ask you for season you have to choose the season anyway, if you're going for irrigation you can select and if this what season you say okay the season is due to the, your, the, the work season starts from like May to June. So when are you starting? Yeah. We can click here and click this. So let me choose the current date, which is on 29th. I'm going to click next. So let's go to this. After harvest, how do you want to um, do or package your crop? So let me just use uh, KG. So, Clicking next now, we automatically set up my workspace. So what I have to do is to go to home, and I will look for my workspace. This, which is this, right? So if I click here, it will take me to my workspace. And uh, automatically, you're going to realize that it will to generate tasks. It's all, uh, that's how we tell you your next task, what to do, the clothing date. So this is the start date, end date. And because, as you can see now, you see uh, even the date you know, we have as well the date that is uh, vacated. It means that okay, if your sowing period is on the 29th, so you are expected to do your site selection at least two or three weeks before the sowing date. That is because I choose 29th. And this is the end date, so it means I can choose my as you can go for my start selection within this period. And uh, we also have a kind of a guide here that will tell you okay, this is how you can able to do the site selection and stuff like that. And at the same time, we also give you expect, uh, predict the uh, crop production cost. So as you can see, we have the expected total plant total cost. Uh, expected turnover and your expected uh, profit. So where is this coming from? You can go to task. You can see the tax of the generator. We have about like six to uh, fifteen tax here. Now this part is very interesting. Why? Because this is where you uh, most of the farmers will be interacting with. Uh, this is the list of the tags that we also generated. That's the start date, the end date, which we are assigned to, you can update. When you click here now, you see a summary of what you have to do. And if you want to view guide, as in to read more, when you click on view guide, then you can able to read more information. And if you can remember, I said that it's very possible to uh, bring uh, um, uh, connect you to our extension workers and this is what i'm talking about uh, requests for consultancy that is why i said planter is not there to uh, take away the job or the duty of extension workers so we still involve extension workers so if this is where you can able to request for consultancy if you feel like you don't understand um, what to do even after within this slide 
So as you can see, we have more guides here that you can easily go through. So this is another part where you can update, add, and do some other stuff. And if you feel like the tax is generated here, it's not okay for you. Maybe you are an expert, you already have your own calendar, stuff like that. All you have to do is to like click on one button by clicking on delete, and everything will be deleted, and you can add your own tax. And if you feel like, okay, well, I'm going to take it, so what am I going to do? I want, I need this um, tax back. Don't worry, all you have to do is just click on this button, and boom, we have all the tax units for you back. Okay, so from the tax generator, we create your generate calendar for you. And not only that, you can be able to see the guy chat. Uh, once I'm over here, you can okay, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, start date, end day, and and if you want to print it out, you can download it as PMD, JPEG, PDF, or SVG. And at the same time, uh, we also try to send the notification. So when it's time for you to do this selection, we send the notification as a reminder, like, yeah, it's time for you to do this particular task. And you can also assign it to someone, you have to tax it somewhere. So that is for my calendar. And for production cost, this is a breakdown of this production cost we have here. So we're not just giving you figures. You can come down to production cost to see the breakdown. As you can see, because I selected rent, this should be the rent. Uh, we have our input cost. This is the breakdown, the brand, quantity, the rate per hectare, cost per hectare. Uh, quantity required, total cost per hectare. So we will tell you the brand. Yeah, you can choose your own brand, but this is just a recommendation. If you like, you follow, but this is coming from expert of, uh, expert of essential workers to go on for some time as well. So we have the breakdown of the input cost, the labor cost. So if you need to hire, how much is it? So we tell you how much you need to pay in the labor you know, for um, insurance too, we tell you, and the projected turnover, the number of bags that you expected to produce by hectare is like 80 bags. And uh, we can also see the rates per unit, cost per hectare, the projected um, quantity. So this is mostly what Planter is all about. Like I said before, Planter is there as a digital farm uh, station consultant. And here is expenses. So you can able to manage your expenses. This part is uh, we call it economics, which is the cost of production economics. So you can click here, let's say category, okay, let's say nine, right? Let's say you know, 5,000, then um, you select the date and just uh, Back dates to that eight. So, so this allows them to to keep track of their uh, expenses, um, how much they're spending. Exactly, exactly. So, we'll we like click here now, automatically to go into here. Now, as you can see, when I add the expenses, automatically shows this and um, this is the figure right here. To tell the question to page. Uh, in Vue.js, I don't know, I just, I didn't actually show the graph from here. So in Vue.js, this is what's called optimistic UI. So it's part of state management. So we do need to uh, refresh the page whenever uh, data has been shared, it automatically updates. I'm really surprised I'm not using Vue.js right here. For Arbest too, the same thing, you can able to add Arbest, I don't want to waste too much time. Uh, for sales, you can also make sales. Um, this is just a kind of a small inventory. You're able to see the number of units left, units sold, and at the same time, the you know, actual sales. So, everything else. Okay, let me just do add one. So, let's say, for example, special, let's say, uh, uh, 
address address the let's say let's say quantity let's say two one hundred uh, into the dates let's choose one hundred okay save okay okay yeah and I want to make a sale so you see in this left one the kg remember from the initial sector we selected kg and I'm going to add sales so via from this uh quantity and certain units in so one thousand right and keep it and say and we had you see ninety uh fifty left and that they need to see the percentage well mm -hmm. so here you can able to like um track how you spend so if you're about to like overspend be able to get that one in that row as you can see um high yeah so we're able to detect that okay i'm about to like overspend so that is just the sum of what everything's all about and over here you can be able to the list of your crop production that you're managing and we also have a knowledge base where you need to see get so this is more neutral and for the constraint of course of that the uh trigger special all war how and counter measures how do you able to uh, I mean, preventive measures like right that. So you will have everything right here. But I think that is just it for for now on um, on Planta. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you know, we're, we're just going through that uh, demo. Um, there are, there's so many features. I was just looking at them. You know, my mind was like, wow, well, the amount of uh, effort that went into everything, the little details here and there. Even you know, uh, I'm just thinking of all the tests that have you know that have to be done in order to make sure everything goes. And um, you know, something one thing that popped out to mind is um, so this is this is um, like an expert uh, system. And this isn't something that you know a beginner. Um, maybe maybe there might be some education here because you already mentioned that this for the corporates. Uh, so like the corporate farmers. So that means um, that, you know, after doing some education on how to, you know, like it's tutorial on how to do this, they'll then be able to um, actually, you know, they'll know which uh, specific place to go to, whether it's to the, um, uh, the hardware side or the workspace um, and so on. So, you know, um, in terms of the actual, um, uh, like product itself, you already mentioned that you've actually gone out to speak with farmers. And I think that's something important because many times as you know, technical people usually assume that we we'll just build something and you know we we'll just take it out there and everybody start using it. <laughs> but yeah, yes. it's very different. Right. Do you do you mind sharing your experience on you know, how you got feedback with this application? Uh, yeah, exactly. So, like you said, I, you know, I already told you that what really uh, motivated me most is because right from the beginning, I see myself as a problem solver. Mm -hmm. That is why I met a lot of people, a lot of developers. I usually said that, I'm like, okay, don't just be a tech guy sitting down doing this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. be smart. Come out with ideas, build the solution, try to figure out the problems out there, and use the power you have. Because to, for you to be able to know the technical know-how on how to do stuff, it means that you have that superpower to solve so many problems. You don't have to do one. So just come up with an idea, start working on the side project, and that side project will possibly grow to start up and from start up to a company. So this is mostly all these big guys that we see out there, like Mazzola, this is just how we started. So yeah. why was it time? Well, you need to do our so yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's good it's good to you you think as a businessman, you know, stepping up. That's just who you should be, not just the tech guy. So and you know, this is the kind of the mentality I have and it's really helping me a lot. So whatsoever I'm doing, I don't just concentrate on living tech and look at the problems out there. 
talk to users, yes, I talk to farmers, all these things you see that we gather there is uh, as a result of looking at research, talking to a lot of farmers out there, people to identify their problems and uh, build a solution for it. And uh, right now it's really amazing because I never imagined that uh, it will go well like this. You know, just trying to like build an app and automatically transition it to build into a solution. I already have people outside in Nigeria to make a request. So I was like, wow, so this is not just to be in Nigeria, it's going to be in Africa. So this is how it works. So that is why I advise the developers out there that no, don't just be like that guy sitting inside your room doing stuff. No, just try, uh, try to think big and build solutions. So this is what we are going to bring so far. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. And, you know, part of that also includes the ability to, you know, work with others and to, you know, be humble enough to get things done. Because sometimes you know, people may spend a lot of energy doing something and then <clears throat> someone yeah. just tries to correct something else, but then they get defensive. But the truth is, you know, that that is actually, it's a blessing in disguise because that's, you know, that's someone telling you, the only way for me to spend money or to pay for this is if it's done in a certain way. So, you know, being open-minded and yeah. being able to take feedback is um, uh, is something that is a skill that uh, many software engineers or anybody in tech um, needs to also uh, cultivate. Yeah, of course, of course, definitely. And one more thing, one, one more thing that uh, most uh, we developers you miss is that you need to be a good listener. Mm -hmm. You should listen a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, even though if you're looking for if you're looking for mentorship, just listen. I hope you're saying now. When you embark on, on a project, try to have someone mentor you, join community. There are lots of other amazing people out there. Like if you're using Vue.js, join the community. If you're using Node.js, join the community. You have community like Discord. Ask questions, you meet a lot of people, you mm -hmm. see lots of codes out there that you're able to learn from it, build a lot of stuff. So even though you don't want to have your own startup, who knows, some of my girls like love what you're doing, and hire you directly. So, uh, if we have a social media, use it well. Like if you're on Twitter and LinkedIn, make sure mostly what you post there are the stuff that you are doing. So let the world keep the work of this and what you are doing so far. If you write a code, you release a feature, put it out there, opportunities might come anyway. So, I think that is what uh, really helps us a lot. And uh, at the same time, if you have that zero, like, okay, you have that definition. Like this project now, I can say, I can really say that I started it single handedly mm -hmm. on my own, just me. Yes. I hope you'll find out. But the strength, what keeps me more is because I have, I'm building because I want to build a solution. I hope you'll find it now, yeah. not just for fun. And that is why I'm still there. Right now, to keep on building, and they work all right, right now. We already have our own office, we have our team, what we do, and in this short period of time, in short period of time, I believe it's going to look uh, really amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope I hope investors watch this video uh, just so you know they know they know where to go. To. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we want to get into the technical aspect. You know, um, you know, someone like you who has already spent five years on okay. this. You know, in the industry. Now, I think a lot of people who watch this channel, they're sort of in the early stages of their career. So now I think, you know, we can set an example of how to actually think from the technical perspective. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have to talk more about Fanta. I've already introduced Fanta and I've already shown you the um, demo. But just for me to get started with the presentation, as I said before, uh, Planta is a smart farm management software. Uh, we see it as a one stop place for farm uh, management, crop production, finance, with soft management, personal training, uh, detection, weather forecast, aggression, and lots more. I've already uh, shown that. So, these are some of the things that we have. And as you can see, the uh, planter is, like I said, both mobile and web based. And don't be surprised, uh, it is responsive because we implemented uh, PWA. So it's easy for a user to, to have access to the platform via our web. And if you're a mobile phone, you can just visit the link and install it directly on your mobile phone. So it doesn't be like a mobile app. So maybe little I'll, I'll explain why. 
So, like I said, our mission is to provide data driven and analytic based expression solution to our kosher skill product that will improve our kosher education economy in and ensure position farming in Sub Saharan Africa. Okay, let me start with the software architecture. Now, what we're actually using is um, serverless microservice. You know, it depends on the kind of solution you're building that uh, it determines the architecture to use. So it's, that's why it's very important for developers to have the kind of um, experience of um, software engineering, not just software development, because it really helps you a lot. The architecture will serve as a foundation. So if you're trying to just look at this from this point of view, if you're trying to like view the health, you need to have a very strong foundation. If the foundation is very poor, definitely the entire house will collapse. So that is the excess. You need to have this kind of basic knowledge so that you're able to know uh, what you're able to know the right architecture to use. But as for planter, we are using serverless microservices. So microservices are smaller segments of application that runs independently. So you have like different chunks of services. Let me give an instance on Planter. Uh, for example, now Planter is deployed on the backend, is deployed on GC, uh, Cloud Run uh, using GCP. So it's deployed on Cloud Run. Cloud Run is serverless, right? So for the front end, we deploy it on Netlify. For the application, we're using Firebase on application. So as you can see, these are different services coupled together to build a solution. So now, and as for serverless, um, serverless architecture is not, it's not about maybe you can have any server that you want to manage. It's not like that. It's just about like, okay, there's a server out there managed for you. All you have to do is to deploy and concentrate on development. So looking at the small number of teams, and like I said, I'm the only one working on this project. So I believe, okay, this will be the best architecture for me to use. Why? Because it has a lot of advantages. I don't need to um, worry about managing infrastructure. Maybe as I'm building now, my mail will be there. It's like, okay, it's all right now, or this is that I need to like create the docker. The managers of uh, pools and like that, yeah. Although it's customized, all ones you write, the ones you uh, deploy once, the, the, uh, the, the service will be managed for you. So I just have to like, concentrate on development and at the same time, in terms of cost, it's very cheap. Why? Because um, it's only charging you pay as you use. So if you have any request, the service goes down. And whenever you have requests, it goes up. So I don't need to pay you the amount of money for infrastructure because this is exactly what people are afraid of, like well, in the VS, even if it's very big, as in for big tech company, uh, the point on AWS, I have that money, I don't do this and that. Not knowing that your architecture determines your cost. So if you're able to do it well, you're able to have a very low cost. So I think I might explain the difference between serverless and microservice. For serverless architecture, you use its function. Like uh, on GCP, we're using cloud function. So most of, uh, we use that for like um, sending SMS to farmers. Maybe on an application, we can receive a welcome email. And um, uh, we are also using it like sync of, uh, to sync data from AWS to Hasura, because that's what we're using for that year. So we can so whenever a user uh, registers on the platform, we collect data from Firebase, right? We use cloud function to send those um, data to Hasura, so we can able to manage users. And uh, maybe another thing is that we also use in our data position. Uh, maybe uh, later on will explain that. So for microservice is a large, microservice is larger than um, serverless function, and all like a serverless function, a microservice can perform more than one function. So I've already explained that. So this is a diagram showing sure just like an illustration between uh, microservice architecture and monolith, monolithic architecture. So an example, typical example of architecture like Django, you know. Django compatible, so it's compatible for so many things. 
the front end and the back end, all the MV, MVP, uh, the MVC, uh, we call it MT, MTV, everything, everything is in one place. But in our own case, we have a front end separate, a back end separate, integration separate, uh, other functions deployed elsewhere. And at the same time, let's say, like, payments, we have payment between also uh, being uh, separated. And for database, we also have different database, like I said before, using our uh, data progression, we can have multiple uh, database having all single endpoints. As well as, as well, you can able to do that. I think it's available at the same time to do that. So uh, from this discussion, you need to see uh, different you know, user interface communicating with different uh, services and at the same time services of um, database. So like I said, most of the advantage of serverless is like no provision, you don't have to like know yourself a lot from that. Transparent scaling of the skill, the skills up, it also works skills and so you don't have more requests, it skills down. If you have high requests, the skills also you don't need to like think of uh nowadays there are a lot of traffic and to like um, add more instance or uh, try to like uh, remove some instances, you don't have to do that. These instances are uh, be managed for you. Events will be at the same time and uh, pay only for use. So that is about the architecture. So for the stack that we use on Planta, it's just the stack we are familiar with. Uh, View, Nox, TypeScript, Firebase, Apollo, GraphQL, Asura, Database, we're using the squares. And the UI components, we're using uh, V to five. I from the beginning, I maybe because I'm coming from front end and guy as a front end guy, so I literally love working on the front end a lot, and I love materialize. So it's not surprising for me to use a V to five for that. It's really good. Now for the uh, deployments. Like I said, we are using Netlify to post uh, a front end because uh, you know, Netlify has advantages here. I might call myself a Vue.js developer. A lot of my projects I use uh, Netlify. I use, I mean, Nox. I use Nox. So uh, we use Nox as a starting generator, SSG. Static sites generate uh, static site generator. So after building, we generate static file and then host it on Netlify. So I think we're able to elaborate more on that when I talk about Jamstack. And that's exactly what brings in Cosmic JS, which is a uh, headless CMS. So the knowledge based part you see there, we're using um, Jamstack. And for the back end, which is uh, where we deploy the Hasura to and uh, maybe cloud, uh, cloud functions and the rest, we're using uh, GCP. So, one more thing Jamstack, right? Because there's no way I'll talk about stuff without mentioning Jamstack. And uh, Jamstack is not something new, it's something we have been using before. It's just a Normal, uh, another approach, a modern approach of uh, building a web application. So the jam is just like we have like main stack, right? So we have jam stack. Yeah. Here. So that J A M stands for JavaScript APIs and markups. So that is what it's all about. So what the heck is it? It's a uh, jam stack, right? The modern way to build website and apps that delivers the good performance. That's the object, and that's the fact. And uh, why do you use Jamstack? We use uh, you, you, you use Jamstack for better performance, high security. It's very cheap. At the same time, uh, better uh, developer experience. Uh, there's a demo I am going to show you on how to implement Jamstack really fast. Just a very uh, small application. So maybe there I'll be able to elaborate more. So for better performance, it's really fast. Well, when you deploy, because we're just getting uh, static files. You know, because after you use like uh, Netlify to host your static file, it's being hosted on CDN. You don't need to manage servers. 
So by the time you are trying to make requests, everything is just coming so fast. You don't need to think of like, okay, yes, this has to come from the server side, this like that. And from the higher security, like I said, not like server, very cheap, very cheap, because there are a lot of free static uh, host sites out there where you can easily um, host your blog site, e-commerce or personal, uh, maybe your portfolio, stuff like that. And for the uh, for developer experience, it's really cool. Maybe by the time I show you the demo, you need to um, see that. So Jamstack is the new standard architecture for the web, right? You can use it with um, CI, CD, right? Uh, continuous integration, whereby after, like this, for example, as you're using Knox, after the reaching, you can push to GitHub, and from GitHub, you know, an event is being triggered, and it will be automatically using the ICD to deploy to uh, Netlify, and Netlify will happen to also to see the end, the users will be able to interact with it. And you can also use uh, Firelex functions as well, let's see for like sending notifications, uh, adding, integrating, payment gateway to your application, things like that. So, the technologies include uh, JavaScript, static site generator, SDMA and CDN. So there are a lot of statistical generators out there. We have for view, we have like Knox and uh, Wisdom. And for React, there is a uh, next JS. Now, headless CMS is okay if you want to manage content that your statistical is going to make use of and you do want to build your own. Market, like I said before, you can use the CMS. For example, it's like this contextual, Strapi, Cosmic uh, JS, which we're using for plant At the same time, content delivery um, network. So, this is the difference between Jamstack and uh, traditional web. You know, for traditional web, a client will have to communicate with, interact with uh, the web server. When you make requests, it goes to the web server. The web server to the app server, then here you can able to like hit the database, get the data, right? Uh, after that, you can uh, the, the uh, app server gives you both HTML, JavaScript, and the data written from the database, and everything goes back to the browser to the client. And maybe if it is like WordPress, the same thing happens here, but that is not the case with Jamstack, like I said, whenever you deploy, you can have your headless CMS here, right? And um, while generating your static site, automatically, uh, Nox.js will generate the static site. The while building, it will make requests to your, to your uh, data using like headless CMS. After getting that, it will bundle everything and automatically help you to deploy to TDM. So whenever a user is making requests, you're not making requests to the server, rather you're just getting the, you're getting the, the static uh, fight from CDN, and it's extremely fast. So whenever you have other requests, maybe any other third party API that you want to use, you can make use of microservice. Like I said, sending notification, uh, authentication like using or zero fire authentication stuff like that you can able to also um, have access or make requests to any other api out there using uh, micro services so uh, that is, is it about um, just that so it's really straightforward very easy now looking at the process as the, the, the experience they good to have while you are using Jamstack, let's say as a full stack developer and as a customer. So I can say full stack developer because yes, you're working with both the front end and the back end. So let's say for example, as next, let's just make a good example. So maybe you have an app that you build with React, Next, and GraphQL, and everything is built using Jamstack. This is your uh, JavaScript, APIs, and mock-up. So after build, you bundle everything. You build after developing it, you build it, then you push to your GitHub repository, right? So since you're using CI CV, the whenever you push to your GitHub repository, then an event is triggered, maybe it's a webhook, 
continuous delivery. So everything goes to uh, Netlify, right? So why generating the static files automatically is making a request to your data hosted on headless CMS. And so for example, I made mention of Contentful. So it gets the data from here, bundle everything with the file. So at the end of the day, you just have HTML file. And this HTML file is now hosted, it's released to uh, CDN, which is um, Content Delivery Network. So whenever a user is in a uh, making request, now as you can see, we're no more making requests to the server, rather we are just getting the static file from the CDN, right? So no contents, no data that is coming from the back end because all the time is that are already being uh, built while they are already being um, added up while building your static file. So all you have is just a single file that user is making the question. So it's really cool, if, even though if you try to like uh, use it along the way, I will have to use it along uh, PWA. So everything, you can make it offline, you can make it work offline. At the same time, uh, there are other things you can include, like uh, background sync or periodic sync. I think this is another thing in uh, that I don't, I don't know there's no more time for me to explain all that. But you can include uh, background sync and uh, periodic sync, where you can be updating data, a new content, and adding it up, making requests there. Or else, the other thing you can do is that whenever you have a new content, you have to regenerate and redeploy to CDN. So, like that. So this part is a CDN from this directory you see, the CDN part, right? And for the microservices, here it is. So, for example, now if you want to like a send notification after registration, you could just call a cloud function and cloud function will just um, trigger and um, perform specific tasks that you want to do. So you see, this is a, this is, a, so this is the client interacting with the CDN and all the microservices as you can see right here. So it's pretty simple and it makes the uh, user experience, it makes it very interesting because it's extremely fast. So I think uh, that is all for uh, the stack views on Lanta. So if you have more time, I can just share a few demos, like I'll talk to quotes now on how you can be able to do something like this. Thank you. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's that's as well, you know, there's also, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what they call, you know, top tier. <laughs> Top tier uh, uh, presentation. <laughs> um, you know, like it's 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 really exciting. Like this, many of these technologies you describe, there are things that um, uh, are sort of you know sort of cutting edge, in the sense that, um, for example, like Jamstack and all that. You know, with Netlify, you know, it's it's something that's breaking, um, you know, breaking and shaking tables around the world. So you know, being able to you know, actually you know to actually implement it. Is um is amazing yeah. because um uh, a lot of times you know the just as you said the architecture actually said the architecture uh impacts the cost uh, so, so yeah. what happen is you know if the code base is not really built well enough it would be hard to sort of keep up with um, you know uh, the new uh, the new stuff and of course um, also. Um, and it's not that people necessarily have to change and you know use the latest and greatest, but of course you know even the deployment style as well, right? The way you design your code shows that it's composable and you can you know, break it down yeah. into these uh, yeah. microservices. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think I think that's awesome. You know, uh, you've shown us a lot of stuff today that uh, people will definitely benefit from. Um, I hope, you know, just as I said earlier, I hope the investors are watching and viewers, if you know any investors, <laughs> and uh, share this video with them, not just your friends, <laughs> share this video with the investors. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any advice um, for anyone who's trying to, you know, uh, get to this stage to, you know, just in general, um, how, how, how do you recommend uh, they start? Uh, 
Yeah, uh, I think a little bit because I most of the time I do a lot of mental a lot of people. So that's I always make reference to what I always talk about. Okay. So what I want to do is uh, go deep then why? Go deep then why? Why? Because uh, most of developers out there they always want to find out. Uh, this without finishing to move to the other wall. Yeah, because uh, this guy started using the app. Yes, I just have to like go a little bit of information. The longer I can change this like one, two, three, five years without achieving anything. Right? So, what could we do to be conversant with all this type of technology is because of the thing I'm working on. Right, because the more um, diving deep into the project, thinking of new features to add, it's quite challenging. So the more I would like think why on how to solve it, right? Because different features have different ways of solving them, right? So we have different uh, solutions with different um, stack. So uh, if you try to like embark on project at first, yeah, it's quite like, so easy. Now, just keep on challenging yourself, right? Keep on challenging yourself. Like, like, say, don't just sit down and think about everything. Whenever you're busy, just take all the ideas and give them the solution. Just keep it. People just give you different ideas. Very challenging, right? Because they don't even know how long it should take you or what it is. That challenge is what you need. So you challenge yourself, make your research, and that's how you're able to come across different technology or strategy. Solve them. I hope you understand. If you are about to make mistakes, at first you might use the wrong one, right? So by the time you keep on making mistakes, I want to keep on improving, not just building. This is the best practice, the best of my job. At least I think that uh, into contribution whenever you are building. So think of using the right stack to use. Because as using them, you come across so many things. You feel like, no, I don't need to use this. Try another one. I don't need to use this. Try another one. Okay, this is the best. I'll use it. So this is how you keep on learning. This is how you keep on uh, building. Yourself. So you keep on going deep. But as you're going deep, you are exposed to so many things. Just like ocean. So if you are trying to swim, swim deep. Because the more you see lots of things, the more you see different and amazing things. So people are just swimming or about they will think they are seeing everything. And they'll keep like, yeah, the best. <laughs> it's not like that. So that was like go deep, gen Y. So that's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, so there's there's uh, there's a philosophy involved uh, in this whole process. Um, you know, what what I hear is the uh, the ability to think long term and to stay consistent, <coughs> which of course means you know, yeah. of course, just like you said, not jumping left and right, but, you know, just keeping in mind yeah. your target goal and to just oh, yeah. little by little, little yes. by little. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and also have area of specialization. Be an expert. Uh, okay, so now there are people who are very good in education. There are people who are very good in database. There are people who are very good. Let people know you with one thing. Whenever they have problem, they will come for you because they know you are the right person. But if people don't know you with or help you with something, they will never know that you are the right person to do this, and they will never come to you. So having specialized, uh, be a specialist of, on, uh, on, on some aspect of, of work to, uh, work development, it really helps a lot. So that's another uh, thing that was really good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I know we had a um, uh, previous guest, we had a discussion of being a specialist versus a generalist. And um, you know, just like you said, there, there's more than, you know, the different sides of it. Because when you're a specialist, people know people know what you know, the single thing they're good for, and they, they know you know yeah. what's going to. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So before we close for today, do you have any uh, where can people find you? Your contact, thinking good on LinkedIn, Twitter, or any place like that. Or any place like that? Uh, yeah. So if you want to reach out with me on Twitter, that's that. Uh, it's just 
Yeah, it's, it seems we lost you for a bit. Uh, this, this is what we do. I'll add the links and description uh, in the description of this video. Uh, and of course, um, I'll uh, add them in the comments and uh, put them on the video. So um, just before we close off, I'd like to say you know, a big thank you uh, to you, Bilo, for you know, spending the time uh, to really take us through this application, as well as you know, really uh, showing us the architecture of the system. You know, the Jamstack, um, ser uh, ser micro uh, service, micro services architecture, and um, we hope to see you uh, succeed. You know, sometime in the future, and have you back uh, when the investors have come back, uh, when the investors have come to your project. So, thank you very much, and have a nice day, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Bye. All right. Yeah. Thank you.